Hello students, welcome to PW. Today I am going to talk about some of the ISI uh, mostly asked question or you can say that these are the previous year questions. My aim is to give you a glimpse how to solve these questions at ease or how your thought process should be when you are going to encounter this problem, right. So, you know that as I have mentioned in earlier video that there are couple of questions which are in the MCQ format and the latter part you will be facing some subjective question which is like around 10 marks each. So, now this class will be for only MCQ and the very next video I will uh, actually des describe some of the subjective problems uh, that will be longer in length uh, as you know it is very obvious because these are the 10 mark question is. Uh, today we are going to solve couple of questions at least 10 12 questions or more uh, which carries four marks each okay so now uh, you might be thinking that since it's an isi exam might be very difficult or so but one thing is very important that is if your fundamental concept is very strong and if you are your core competency in maths is at a high level or at its peak level means you are preparing for iit advance or any other that top order competitive exam in india then you should be well equipped to solve this kind of problem Okay, so uh, today uh, I will just try to demonstrate you how to uh, think about those problem and how to solve also. Okay, and all the concept that I am going to demonstrate kindly take a note of that because this will help you in further future also to solve any tough problem. All right, so our today's target uh, will be some of the MCQ problem, some of the MCQ problem, and topic will be mainly algebra, geometry. and involving uh, some of the you know binomial theorem or complex number etc miscellaneous type remember one thing that in isi you will get mostly the questions which are depending on the core concept of the mathematics not a very uh, application oriented problem usually asked in je mains or any other state level engineering exam but if you look at the advanced paper you might see that there are some of the questions which are uh, uh, depending on a very core concept in mathematics like the calculus part or the function part those which are actually uh, relevant to uh, the flavor of the mathematics all right so now let's get started with the first question so first read the question that the for a real number x x cube minus 7 x plus 6 is greater than 0 if and only if see this is a cubic polynomial right this is a cubic polynomial as the highest degree of this polynomial is 3. So, we can say that this is a cubic polynomial alright. So, now a cubic polynomial is greater than 0 or less than 0 or whatsoever. You might be wondering there are two ways to solve this problem not key you should solve it algebraically rather you can solve it also using calculus because you know that if you take f x equals to x cube minus 7 x plus 6 this is a function and it is clearly a polynomial function hence uh, continuous and derivable for all x belongs to r correct. So, from here you can find out f dash x and f dash x will be a quadratic obviously this is 3 x square minus 7 and now you can find it where f dash x is greater than 0 and less than 0 and then you can think about the change of sign of f dash x to find any extremum value of f x and then you can draw a graph and find out but that is little bit a lengthy approach because here one hint or trick is hidden inside this mathematics and this is the pure gem of a mcq question that student can be deviated from the original life of thinking so i will not go through this calculus approach but if you want you can actually try it by using calculus approach try it using application of derivative which is called aod in short all right so now uh, what I am going to do but using just class 5, 6 or 7th level concept because uh, probably it might be thinking that uh, this is an ISI problem why sir is talking about 7th or 8th concept and that is the beauty of mathematics. Think about it that this is a polynomial where the coefficient you look this is 1, minus 7 and 6. The trick inside it is that if you add all the coefficient this coefficient will resultant as a 0. So, you know that if a polynomial has the sum of all coefficient equals to 0, then x equals to 1 must be a root of this polynomial, all right. So, what is the note here? Kindly note it down if you, if possible. So, if sum of the coefficient, sum of the coefficient of a polynomial is 0, then 1 must be a root 
All right. So now you see that x cube minus 7 x plus 6, the coefficient of this polynomial is equals to 0. Hence, x equals to 1 must be a root, right. And now I will use the vanishing method to solve these problems. All right. So now find out what is given x cube minus 7x plus 6. I will write down both line and this is x minus 1 and this is x minus 1 and this is x minus 1 because the uh, degree is 3, the uh, degree is 3. So, we will just write 3 factors in a line. All right. So, now the first term is x cube, hence I will multiply by x square which will be x cube minus x square. As there is no x square, so I will add x square. To take this x square, I will multiply by it x minus x. So, now if you look at this, this is a plus 6, right? And this is the last factor. So, if your factorization is correct, the last factor automatically will match. That means, here you need to write down minus 6x. So, that means here you need to multiply by minus 6. Once you start multiplying it, you will see that the constant term automatically will match. If it does not match, then your factorization might be wrong. All right. So, this is also one of the way to verify this process that how you, you can actually factorize a cubic polynomial or a higher degree polynomial. All right. So, now what we will do? Uh, we will do is x minus 1 into x square plus x minus 6. So, this will become x minus 1 into uh, x square. Uh, this is actually a factorization. So, I will not write many lines. This will become x plus 3 into x minus 2. So, roots are what? So, roots are 1, 2 and minus 3. So, now we will approach the wavy curve method. Probably you might have known in your 11, 12th grade what is an wavy curve method to solve the uh, inequality, right? A polynomial inequality or a you know fraction of polynomials inequality, etc., etc. However, uh, let me just explain it to you also through this problem that how did I solve this, all right? So, we will draw a real line here and the roots will just plot the roots, right? So, minus 3 and uh, this is 1 and this is 2. If you put 0 here, what will come? I will put 0, then it will become negative and it will become positive and it will become negative because 0 minus 1 is minus 1, 0 minus 2 is minus 2. So, minus 1 into minus 2 is 2 into 3 that is 6, so positive and 0 is lying between uh, minus 3 to 1, hence it will be positive, right, wavy curve method. So, now this will be negative and this will be positive and this will be negative. So, that means you saw that that fx polynomial or px polynomial whatsoever is greater than 0 if x belongs to minus 3 to 1 and x belongs to 2 to infinity. That is it, right. So, what are the options here? So, one is the one of the option is minus 3 to x to 1 and x greater than 2. These are the, uh, this should vary actually, right. So, what is that? Minus 3 to x to 1 or x greater than 2. So, option D is correct. So, how easy this question is, even though it is an ISI problem, but I have solved using just a polynomial concept which you might have learned in class 8th grade or 9th grade or 10th grade, right. I did not use any 11th, 12th concept. If you want to use it in the 11th, 12th concept, then you might be wondering to use uh, the maxima minima concept, increasing, decreasing concept of AOD and then solve this cubic equation, alright. So, any approach is uh, possible and uh, acceptable in ISI as you know. Uh, you need to solve only 5 to 10 questions, just probably 5 questions is enough for you to cross the cutoff mark in UGA level that is the MCQ paper, alright. So, now next find out what are the uh, next question that is define a polynomial fx by fx equals to it is given in a determinant form that 1 xx, x1 x, xx1 for all x belongs to R where the right hand side above is the determinant then the roots of fx are of the form. First form is given alpha plus alpha and beta plus iota gamma, where iota is a complex number, imaginary number you might have said, and alpha alpha beta, where alpha beta are the distinct number, mean two equal root, one distinct root, all three are distinct root and three equal root. All those are the concept that is given in this problem. However, we should not look at the uh, just whatever the equal root or unequal root or anything, just uh, you might want to understand that this question actually asked you that what type of roots you will get, whether it is a real root or a, or a real and pair of complex roots and so on so forth. And you might be wondering that why the complex root is given in the pair form because in the conjugate form, because you know that any polynomial with real coefficient, uh, the complex root will occur with its conjugate. It cannot occur alone, right. So, you, you know that probably till 
till date you have learned so far. However, uh, let us find out that uh, what are the roots and all. So, here we cannot do much. Yeah, we, we do not have the luxury to, you know, uh, sort in this problem or anything because it is a determinant. You need the expansion. You need the uh, polynomial equation by breaking down the determinant, all right. So, we will not wait for to find any trick or anything. Just this kind of problem, this will become any degree polynomial that I do not care until or unless I expand the determinant, all right. So, let us find out to expand the determinant and then find out what type of uh, roots are coming. So, f x equals to that is given 1 x x x 1 x and x x 1 right all right so now f x equals to this it is given all right so now i am going to actually this when you are expanding a determinant there are many ways you can do the row operation and column operation in order to solve the determinant or in order to simplify the determinant not solve i would say in order to simplify the determinant so let's uh, actually do it so what i'll do i will write down 1 0 0 you might have said that, sir, how did you do it 1, 0, 0? Uh, I will write down the operation. How did you write? At, uh, C2, column 2, C2 dash, that is equals to C2 minus xc1 and C3 dash equals to C3 minus xc1. Means you are multiplying by x to the first column and then subtract it from second and third column. So, what I have done, if I will write down in words, then multiply with first column and subtract it, subtract it from second and third column, second and third column, all right. So, uh, these are the basically approach. So, now I will just write down the next one, what is that? So, it will become uh, x 1 minus x square and if you multiply x here, so it will become x minus x square and now it will become x, x minus x square and now it will become 1 minus x square, all right. So, these are the basically the determinant. So, now I will expand this determinant. So, this will become 1 minus square uh, whole square minus x minus x square whole square, all right. So, f x equals to what I have got? f x equals to I have got 1 minus x square whole square minus x minus x square whole square, all right. So, now you have to solve this f x equals to 0 and find out the roots. Uh, so, what I will do here? We will write down 1 minus x whole square into 1 plus x whole square as 1 minus x square is 1 minus x into 1 plus x. And this will become x square if you will take common 1 minus x whole square. How beautiful is that? All right. So, 1 minus x whole square into 1 plus 2x plus x square minus x square minus square just I have expand this here x square x square get cancelled. So, now this will become again more easier 1 plus 2 x. So, f x equals to 0 if you will take f x equals to 0 if you will take it will become 1 minus x whole square equals to 0 and that implies x equals to 1 and 1 plus 2 x equals to uh, 0 and that is x equals to minus up. So, roots are what? You might be seeing that 1 and minus half are there, but you check that 1 minus x whole square is there, means equal root comes. So, that means 1, 1 and minus half. So, roots are in the alpha, alpha and beta form, all right, where alpha not equals to beta and alpha beta belongs to R, all right. So, roots are in the form alpha, alpha, beta, where alpha and beta are the real numbers, alpha and beta are the real numbers and uh, so, these are the equal root and one distinct root. So, what you will get? Alpha, alpha, beta, where alpha and beta are the distinct part. So, option B is the correct. So, see, this ISI problem also does not have anything. So, if you have, if you just keep your brain calm and quiet and you concentrate purely on the exam, uh, exam code paper and uh, not other thing, distracted in the hall, uh, you might be actually cracking IITJ, uh, uh, ISIB entrance, right? All right. So, now, let us find out what is the next question. The next question said, let be the set of all those real number x for which the identity n equals to 2 to infinity cos to the power n x equals to 1 plus cos x into cot square x is valid. Then the quantities for both sides are finite then. See, the thing is that here you might be wondering that what are the options and how the option has come. 
one thing probably you might know that if you add 1 n times you will get n right or if you add minus 1 n times you will get minus n but if i say that if you add 1 infinity times you don't know how the value it will be it might be infinity or infinity into 1 or whatsoever and so on and so forth but they have said that that these values are both sides are finite when this is finite and this is also finite so what i have to think here actually this is see, by looking this summation term if you look at it this is n equals to 2 to uh, infinity plus to the power nx see this is this is actually a sum of gp infinite gp indeed right because if you will expand it it will become cos square x plus cos cube x plus so on so forth so now the first and foremost thing that should occur to your mind that if you want to get this term as finite and cos x by cos square x or any cos to the power nx for example it will vary from minus 1 to plus 1 right so there are three integers which can disturb our concept but if you think about that if you think about that if you will take cos x equals to 0 you might be wondering that 0 is added over infinity times means it will be actually 0 into infinity form which is indeed in indeterminate form in limit which is indeed a indeterminate form in limit all right hence it will give you a finite value right so for 0 i will get finite so we don't have to worry about it so now if cos x equals to minus 1 or plus 1 we don't know what will be the value of it because you are adding infinity times hence it certainly will not be a finite quantity all right so if cos x equals to 1 then suppose this i will take at s then s will not be finite s will not be finite as the series diverges as the series diverges all right yes divergence means you are not getting any convergent number that is finite number divergence means going towards infinity and infinity open it so now this cos x equals to 1 that means s will not be a finite hence the since the limit is uh, series is diverges similarly if cos x equals to 1 this cannot happen right so so x cannot be 2 n pi right where n belongs to integer because you know that cos even multiple of pi cos even multiple of pi will always give you 1 and cos odd multiple of pi will always give you minus 1 this is a class 11 trigonometry see i am using very simple concept to solve this problem i hope you will like it and as well as uh, it will give you some benefit when you are going to solve problems now so probably your next thought process should be sir so told that cos x cannot be minus 1 as well because if cos if cos uh, x equals to minus 1 then also series diverges then also series diverges all right so if cos x equals to minus 1 means what x also uh, cannot be just now i have told that odd multiple of pi cannot happen right so first and foremost thing that we have got so far is that x cannot be 2 n pi means that is even multiple of pi even multiple of pi x cannot be 2 n plus 1 into pi that is odd multiple of pi right i am telling you that x cannot be even multiple of pi and odd multiple of pi as well so now that means what x cannot be the even multiple of pi and odd multiple of pi that means x cannot be any integer multiple of pi so combining these two combining these two we get x cannot be n pi x cannot be n pi so now what i'll think about it so if x is not equals to n pi certainly we know that cos to the power nx must be less than 1, must be less than 1, okay. So, now what I will do? I will do it 
that s equals to s equals to summation over n equals to 2 to infinity cos to the power nx if this is a sum of the infinite gp where the common ratio is cos x which is strictly less than 1 so i can use the sum of the infinite gp and that means the first term will be cos square x divided by 1 minus cos x all right cos square x is 1 minus cos x okay all right now what they have asked you they have asked you that uh, 1 plus cos x into cot square cot square x all right so i will just manipulate this whether this will become a identity or not okay. whether this will become an identity or not okay so this will become 1 plus cos x since it is given as right side so i will take it that as an hint in the question divided by 1 minus cos x into 1 plus cos x so that means cot square x into this will become actually 1 minus cos square x so that is sin square x cos square x by sin square x is cot square x into 1 plus cos x hence identity hence identity so this is an identity when when x not equals to this is an identity when x not equals to n pi means if it is n pi then we will not get any kind of finite sum of the series so it will uh, x cannot be in pi so now let us find out the option here so x belongs to r x not equals to n pi for oh that is this is all all right so option b is the right answer all right all right so now next question let us come to the next question the number of consecutive zeros adjacent to the digit in the unit place of 401 to the power 50. So, this is a very interesting problem. Probably there are little calculation that is involved here. Uh, see, the last digit of unit digit means the last digit, last digit is always 1 because 1 last digit is 1 here 401. If you multiply 1 by 1 by many times, you will get at last 1 only. So, the last digit is anyway, it will always be 1. There is no doubt about that. But now the question is suppose you are getting like this. A, uh, a dot 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 0 0 0 0 1 yes, I suppose you are getting or 4 0 1 so adjacent to the unit plus there are 4 zeros right so answer will be 4 like that okay so the question says that if you expand this the value you will get at, at last just beside the uh, unit digit how many zeros will be present all right so now what I will do 4 0 1 whole to the power 50 this kind of question you solved it in J level or so so 4 0 1 Four double zero means four hundred plus one whole to the power fifty. So now, uh, if I'll write down here, what I'll write? Achha, I'll write it in a little opposite direction to make our calculation easy. Okay. So now, uh, what I'll do? Okay. So this will become uh, r equals to zero to fifty, fifty cr, right? Into 400 whole to the power r because 1 to the power 50 minus r will give you always 1 right now uh, see here one of the very good thing that i am going to do the first term will be r equals to 0 that means it will be 1 plus second term means it will become 50 c 1 means 50 into 400 plus third term you will get 50 c 2 50 c 2 means how, how, how much uh, 50 c 2 50 C2 is 15 to 49 by 2, uh, that means 25. Right, all right. So, this will become 1 to 25 into 400 whole square plus uh, this will onwards. Now, I, it will become um, this will become what? 50 C3 means if I will write down here. 50 C 3 400 to the power r. So, here you will write down r summation over r equals to 3 to 50. All right. So, just first three term I have written first. Why you will understand? So, now this will become 1 plus 2 triple 0 to triple 0 plus 20 and triple 0. So, 4 0 20,000 and it will become uh right i hope so now ah uh, all right this will become actually 
16 into 16 1 2 2 5 into 16 so how much it will be One nine six double zero, right? And uh, there are four zero. One nine six double zero. One two three four plus uh, R equals to three to fifty. Fifty C R four hundred to the power R. All right. Four hundred to the power R. Okay. Acha. If I write down it little clear clearly, so I think this will be better uh, to understand for everyone. So let me just write it clearly because. Whenever I am doing the calculation, my handwriting is usually little bad. So, kindly tolerate, kindly 50 C R 400 to the power R. All right. So, now this will become actually that is what it is present for. Okay. Now, if you will add this, it will become 196. This is 5 digits 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 means 2 triple 0 1 so this will become 19602 okay so 0 2 1 2 3 1 like that plus this value r equals to 3 to n 50 c r 40 to the power 400 to the power r you might be asking that sir why did you write uh, 400 to the power 3 onwards, you wrote it in its summation form because the very next time onwards it will become 400 whole cube, right. Once the 400 cube is coming means la the last 6 digits should be always 0. Hence, this will not be impacted, this will not be impacted because the last 6 digit of this part. So, I will write down what last 6 digit, last 6 digits of 50C. R 400 to the power R summation over R equals to 3 to 50 will always be 0. Always be 0. That is why I have written the first three term because that will vary actually. So, now if the last six digit is 0, that means which part is 0 always? This part, this which will, will be added with this part. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, this part will be always fixed. So, if you will add this, if you will just find out the value of this expansion, the last 6 digit of this will be always this. So, I will write down what? So, last 6 digit, hence, hence, last 6 digits of this expansion, of this expansion, which 401 to the power 50 will always be. 0 to that is it. So, now you see that the unit place there are 3 0 that is present. So, hence the answer will be 3. See the thought process is little difficult. You might be probably re recapping the video once more to understand this better. So, what I have done so far let me recap this once. So, I have recapped this because you will really understand it better. This is the first 3 digits that I have written because the last 6 digit will vary onwards because once you do this part 3 onwards, 400 to the power 3 onwards, then your uh, digit will not vary much at the last 6 part. So, and I have got inside this after unit digit, these 3 zeros will be there which will be always fixed. Alright. So, that is why I have kept, I have counted actually the first 3 terms sum and the rest term will not affect thus the last 6 digit because I have got adjacent 0 to a unit place and then I have got a non-zero number. So, that means these are the adjacent 0 to the unit place. All right. So, this is the approach of the questions. It might be little difficult you can consider because the thought process is little higher uh, or it might not click to someone. Okay. Now, the question see that consider a right angled triangle ABC whose hypotenuse AC is of the length 1. The bisector of ACB angle intersects AB at B. If BC is of length X, then the what value of CD? All right. So, this kind of problem whenever it is involving a geometry. I will just do what first I will draw a figure, right? First I will draw a figure. All right. So now they have asked you that ABC whose hypotenuse is AC and A B. This length is one, all right. 
I do not have any problem with that. So, now they have asked you that uh, the bisector of ACB intersect AB at D. Bisector of ACB means this bisector I will get. So, let us find out what are the bisectors. Uh, first draw probably one rough line would be fine. So, now what they have said? They have said that the bisector of ACB cuts AB at D or intersect AB at D. If BC is the length of X, okay, this is the length of X, then what will be the length of CD? Let the length of CD is D. So, what I have done? Let the length of CD be D. All right. Now, I have to find what D in terms of X. See, here I will not use any Euclidean geometry or so, because I have many very, very uh, elementary concepts that is trigonometric which you have learned in class 10th grade, that, that concept only I am using. So, what I will do? Mm, okay, that might be good. Suppose this angle is alpha, since this is an angular bisector, so this will be 2 alpha. So, I will write let or suppose, suppose angle ACB that is 2 alpha and angle BCD, angle BCD that is alpha, all right. So, now what I will do? I will do here that uh, I will just simply compare this with the trigonometric value, okay. So, in the triangle BCD, in the triangle BCD, what will happen? Cos alpha equals to cos alpha that is equals to x by d. So, I will write down cos alpha that is equals to x by d. All right, indeed a good thing. Now, in triangle ABC, cos 2 alpha, cos 2 alpha uh, that is equals to x by 1. Oh, that is good. And we know cos 2 alpha is what? 2 cos square alpha minus 1 that is equals to x. So, that means 2 cos square alpha equals to x plus 1. So, cos square alpha equals to x plus 1 by 2. Cos square alpha means what? x by d I have got. So, from here I will write down x square by d square and that is equals to uh, x plus 1 by 2. So, d square equals to 2 x square by x plus 1, all right. So, d equals to what? Root over 2 x square by x plus 1 as d is a positive quantity because it is a length. It can never be negative. Hence, I did not put plus minus in the left side, all right. So, d I have got 2 x square by x plus 1, uh, x plus 1, x plus 1, this is, sorry. See how simple this problem is. This, this should not take more than 3 minutes or 4 minutes. So, this is the concept I have used here is plus 10 trigonometry, plus 10 trigonometry, the definition of sine cos, nothing else. So, actually ISI wants you to solve some of the questions which are very elementary level, but you need to find or you need to have a, you know, a mental uh, equipped strategy because people often tend to think that, oh, this is the best, toughest exam. I might be not solving any problem, but actually the reality is not that. There are a couple of questions which are really easy and you can solve those. If you can find it, you got a jackpot. If you could not find it, you are, you are doomed. <laughs> All right. So, however, so now next we take it. Consider the right angle triangle with vertices 0, 0, 1, 2 and minus 4, 2. Let A be the area of the triangle and B be the area of the circumcircle of the triangle then b by a equals to, all right. So, this is also a very good question. Let us solve it. See, first I will draw a coordinate axis part and you will understand what is the, actually the flavor is hidden inside this uh, beautiful problem, all right. Okay. So, the first foremost thing is 0, 0 is one of the vertex. So, probably I will take it as a 1 comma 2, 1 comma 2, probably I will take it here a, uh, that is 1 comma 2 that is I will take as B and minus 4 comma 2 mm, that is yeah, minus 4 comma 2 all right. So, now this is the triangle and probably you might have understand what is it, what is it you might have understand right or you did not understand till now. Take 
bracket. Looks like what? Right angle triangle. But is it? Looks like what? Right angle. You might be saying that, sir, if you draw a picture like that, in it, anybody can say it's a right angle triangle. Uh, but do not draw like that. All right. Let me find out. What is AB vector? What is AB vector? AB vector is I plus 2J. What is AC vector? That is minus 4I plus 2J. AB dot AC how much? 0. Uh, that means AB is perpendicular to AC. So, these are perpendicular means this is a right angle triangle. All right. So, AB length is what? Root over 5. This length is what? Root over 20. So, area of the triangle is how much? Uh, area of triangle ABC. Up into base into height. Up into base into height. So, that is height. Right. All right. Now, I have asked you the circum circle. You know that circum radius circum radius is half of the circum radius is half of the hypotenuse hypotenuse correct because any right angle triangle if you want to draw a circum circle then the midpoint of the hypotenuse will be the circum center so now i will find out what is bc length uh, bc length is very easy that is here is this one unit here it is four unit means this is minus four now and two y axis is y coordinate is same everywhere so that is four plus one that is five okay so you have got the bc so circum radius if i will say r so that means it will be five by two so area is how much pi r square pi into 25 by four and that is given as b probably right and A is given is what? 5. So, B by A is how much? 25 pi by 4 divided by 5. That means 5 pi by 4. That is a another easy problem. Just you need to find out that this is a right angle triangle and the question become very, very easy and you can solve it at ease. All right. All right. So, this is also one of the geometry problem. So, so far we have solved trigonometry problem, algebraic problem, geometrical problem, etc, etc. But you think that the level is even the not touching the advanced level, right? So, now next, check it. What is it said? This is also a little bit of calculus approach and uh, let me explain the question first. Can be, be f and g be continuous functions from 0 to infinity to itself, means this is the domain to itself means 0 to infinity which is the codomain not range think about it codomain and range are both different thing hx is given as hx is given as 2 to the power x to 3 to the power x ft dt f dash x is given as 0 to hx dt dt f dash is the derivative of f then what is the f dash x that you have to find okay so since i have the function fx that is equals to how much 0 to hx dt dt x is greater than 0 is given all right now think about it since it is given that 0 to hx gt and dt 0 to hx dt and dt i have to find f dash x so no matter what i have to use newton's leibniz formula what is the newton leibniz formula if if you don't know so let me write it for you that is what is it newton leibniz rule probably telling you if you check it it would be great dx of this is basically the differentiation under the sign of integration so dx hx ft dt all right so what I will do here, I will simply write down h this first upper limit in place of t. So that means f of h x. Since this is a function of x, I will write down h dash x minus. I will put lower limit here into h dash x. 
and this is nothing but uh, Newton Levinis rule, a very popular rule in IIT JE means or advanced. Correct. So now what I will do here? So by this rule, I can use it here actually. I can use it here. So what will be that? What will be that? Take it. It is written that f x equals to this. That means f dash x will be h x. I will put it in G's argument. And then the derivative of hx, which is h dash x minus g of 0 into d dx of 0, that is 0. All right. So, hence I will not write down the second part of this part because this in the second part of this differentiation will be automatically 0. So, now I have what hx and h dash x, and hx is already given, right. And the question answer the optimal answer is given in the option that is h and g h and f, but here I still I did not get what is f, right. So, I will just use it here another Newton Leibniz formula on what probably you might have understood so far that is 2 to the power x to 3 to the power x f t dt all right f t dt. So, h dash x will be what h dash x this will be again I will apply Newton Leibniz formula that is f of 3 to the power x into 3 to the power x ln 3 minus f of 2 to the power x 2 to the power x ln 2. All right. So I will just simply put here. So g of h x is fine. So it's f dash x. I will rewrite h dash x. F dash x. That is g of h x. That I cannot disturb anything, right? Because it does not have anything value with me. But h dash x certainly I will keep it here. F of three to the power x to the power x ln three minus f of two to the power x two to the power x ln two where x is greater than 0. So, this is the beautiful answer that I have got. How many lines I have done? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 lines you are getting 4 marks, right. So, this is also one of the, I would say that this is a moderate problem that I have, ISI has asked so far. So, option D will be the answer. So, check it and these are all core ISI question. I have not taken from anything, okay. So, think about it if you are capable of this thing. I hope that those who prepare for mains they also can encounter this problem easily and you know try to secure the first part of the exam okay all right all right so now so the concept that we have used so far is this and this is very important very important in calculus okay all right How many numbers formed by rearranging the digits of 2, 3, 4 and 5, 7, 8 which are divisible by 55? We do not know the rule of divisibility. We do not know the rule of divisibility of 55 because it is not a prime number or neither it is a composite number indeed and it is a very large number. But if a number is divisible by 55, I would say if a number is divisible by 55 then it must be divisible by 5 and 11. Suppose the number might be like this form the six digit number right the a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 like that those are the digit of the number all right so if i will write down uh, 1 1 2 2 3 3 this is like uh, 1 lakh 11233 so the a1 is 1 a2 is 1 a3 is 2 a4 so is 2 a5 is 3 a6 is 3 like that so, if this is divisible by if this is divisible, divisible by 11, then what? I know that A3, A1 and A5, A1 plus A3 plus A5 minus A2 plus A4 plus A6 should be divisible by 11 should be 
divisible by 11 that is it. So, now if I will say that the minimum sum what we will get. So, I will write down minimum sum of 3 digits among 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, see, if you will say that the minimum sum, that means the lowest 3 values I can take, right, so that will be 2 plus 3 plus 4, that is 9, and the maximum sum, and same of maximum sum, that is, you will get the top 3 values, that is 5 plus 7 plus 8, that is 20, so the difference is what, difference is 20 minus 9, that is 11, all right. So, you will not get any other combination other than this 9 and 20, means 2, 3, 4 or 5, 7, 8. You will not get any other combination that will give you the number which will be divisible by 11. So, what I will do here? I will do here. So, A2, A4, A6 can be 2, 3, 4 or and A1, A3, A5 can be 5, 7, 8. This is one of the combination you will get or you can write it, you might say that sir A1, A3 and A5 can be 2, 3, 4 and A2, A4, A6 can be 5, 7, 8, right. So, either this combination will happen or this combination will happen, all right. So, uh, you might be saying that sir, why did not you take any other combination, see since the difference is you are getting 11, so if you will take any other thing shuffling around means suppose you will take uh, 5 here means and you will take 4 here means here increment is 1, here decrement is 1, so that means automatically it will be 19 and here it will be uh, 2, 3, 5, 5 plus 5, 10, 19 minus 10 is 9 which will not never be 11 multiple, right. So, anything you transfer it, it will be less than 11, which is not be a divisible by 11 and neither their sum will be equal, all right. Since the number is distinct, so their three sums number will never be equal, all right, all right. So, and these are not the consecutive number as well. So, what will be happening? So, case 1 this will be and case 2 this will be, but remember that the number is divisible by 55, number is divisible by 55 means the number should be divisible by 5. Hence, A6 to must be 5, otherwise it will never be divisible by 5. So, what are the case you have? So, now, so that means A6 should be 5. So, which combination is this? This combination. But here A6 can never be 5 because I am taking from 2, 3, 4. So, this combination also is not valid. This combination is not valid because if you will take this combination, A6 can never be 5 because A6 is not taken from 5. It has taken, rather it has taken from 2, 3, 4. So, this combination is invalid. So, only the combination left is 2, 3, 4 and 5, 7, 8, this is the combination. So, now what I will do? So, if you will just draw 6 boxes. So, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6. If you will not, now write down 1, 3, uh, A3, 1, 5 is 2, 3, 4. A1, A3, A5 is 2, 3, 4. And this is 5, 7, 8. 5, 7 and 8. Here it will be 5, here it will be 7. So, now what I will do, these three number can be supplying around in three factorial way. Here so it is fixed. So, these two number can be supplying around in two factorial way. And so, the answer will be 12. Hence, the answer will be 12. So, what I will do here, I will write down, I will write down the number that is this 12. So, 12 is actually uh, the number of such number will be 12, all right. So, the answer will be 12, option B. Correct. So, this is also a little difficult problem, but it is under permutation combination. So, probably people might get confused that why there will be only one combination, because other than that you will never get such number which will be divisible by 11, all right. So, that is all. Now, next if we will take down this question, let S equals to this and T equals to this, how many elements does S intersection T has, means S intersection T has those elements which are basically present in S as well as present in uh, T, ok. So, if we will take S equals to, so suppose x y I am taking, so x equals to what I can write it, x equals to I can write it, x equals to I can write it, let me write it in different color, so that it will be visible for you, 
so x can be equals to theta sin i theta by 1 plus theta y equals to uh, i can write it y equals to 1 by theta cos pi theta by 1 plus theta so now if s intersection t that means if x y belongs to in this s then x y also belongs to in this case so that means in t you saw that x y equals to half in t in s what is that x y equals to theta sin pi theta by 1 plus theta into 1 by theta cos pi theta by 1 plus theta so theta theta get cancelled so we can write it half times half times sin 2 pi theta by 1 plus theta all right because what half into 2 multiply sin a cos a to sin 2 a formula if s intersection t is this means this should be equals to this means i can write it half should be equals to half sin 2k pi or 2 pi theta divided by 1 plus theta is this get cancelled so it will become sin theta sin 2 pi theta by 1 plus theta and that is equals to 1 so we can write it 2 pi theta by 1 plus theta that is equals to 2k pi plus pi by 2 2k pi plus pi by 2 now if we will cancel out pi what will become 2 theta by 1 plus theta that is equals to um, k 2k plus two k plus uh, this will become half. So theta by one plus theta that is k plus one by four. Now theta is what? Theta is greater than zero. All right. So since theta is greater than zero, so theta uh, theta is greater than zero means one plus theta greater than theta. So that means zero it is greater than theta by one plus theta less than one. All right. All right. So now if this I will write down. So, k plus 1 by 4 that is 0 less than 1. So, minus 1 by 4 to k less than 3 by 4. So, k equals to how much? I will find out since k is an integer, here k is an integer obviously because you are writing down the solution here, right? So, since k is an integer, so k should be equals to 0 because minus 1 by 4 to 3 by 4, there is only one integer left, alright? So, this basically why? Because if I will get k equals to 0, that means this many of it has solution you will get for which s intersection t has any element all right so uh, k equals to 0 must be a solution so that means theta plus 1 by theta theta plus 1 by theta that is 1 by 4 and that implies theta equals to 1 by 3 uh, theta equals to 1 by 3 i hope that is correct by 3 is 1 all right so theta equals to 1 by 3 that means only one element left that is I in pi theta means pi by 3 by 1 plus 1 by 3 and this and this. So, that means only one element is there. So, option B is the answer. So, only one element is there because if you will get would have got many thetas then that many element will be present in this S intersection T. So, since I am getting only one solution. So, this is also one of the interesting solution. Those are the interesting solution. All right. But I would say this is a level up problem, not a very easy problem to think about. All right. All right, guys. So now next, what I'll say? Let's solve a couple of more problems so that you will understand it beautifully. Now find out this: the value of k equals to zero to two hundred two minus one whole to the power k two hundred two base k cos k pi by 3 is equals to see this is the one of the uh, very interesting problem because you know that uh, e to the power iota theta you know that what e to the power iota theta that is equals to cos theta plus iota sin theta cos theta plus iota sin theta so this is basically i can write it real part of real part of summation over k equals to 0 to 202 k equals to 0 to 202 minus 1 whole to the power k 
So that means you can write it as this is nothing but 1 minus e to the power iota pi by 3 whole to the power 202. That is very interesting. So, so the real part of this what? This is basically the real part, the real part of right. By complex number you can write it. So, if you write down real part that means you will get it cos 202 pi by 3 is the answer. Very good answer. See, three lines just. But probably here you might not understand, but you solve it, you will get it. If you will solve it, you will get it, right? Because 1 minus e to the power iota pi by 3, if you will write down, uh, it will become what? e to the power minus iota pi by 3 into e to the power iota pi by 3 minus e to the power minus iota pi by 3. Like that, if you will solve it, you will get it, all right? So, this is the solution. So, this is the application of complex number. Probably there are many step jumps here in it, and you can write it in home always, not a problem. All right. Very good. Take it. Saying that f r to r be a twice differentiable function 1 to 1 obviously f of 2 equals to 2 f of 3 equals to minus 8 f of 2 equals to 2 and f of 3 equals to minus 8 2 to 3 f x d x equals to minus 3 it is given you need to find out what minus 8 to 2 f inverse x d x since i am taking that y equals to f inverse x suppose then x equals to what f of y so d x equals to what f dash to y dy so now this integration will become since I have take changes the variable as using the substitution and x is how much it is given minus 8 f inverse minus 8 is how much f inverse minus 8 from here you can write it that is 3 f inverse 2 that is 2 so f inverse minus 8 is 3 and if you take 2 then it will be 2 so uh, this will become this integration will become 3 to 2 3 to 2 because 2 to 2 and 3 is minus 8 all right so 3 to 2 y f inverse x is y f dash y dy so now l is just simply differentiation under the sign of integration that is what y f of y 2 to 3 2 to uh, 3 to 2 sorry 3 to 2 all right minus dy dd of y is y is that is 1 minus integration f dash to y dy that is f y so integration 2 to 3 f y dy all right 3 to 2 3 to 2 3 to 2 correct now this will become 2 into f of 2 minus 3 into f of 3 minus and minus plus because I will swipe up the limit 2 to 3 f of y dy 2 into f of 2 that is 4 3 into f of 3 f of 3 is minus 8 so plus 24 minus f of y dy 2 to 3 that is 3 so 28 minus 3 that is 25 how easy is that how easy is, is that I have just substituting a dust x equals to y, then the remaining answer is at ease, right? How easy is that? All right, so find out this question. If f0 to r be a continuous function such that fx equals to fx equal now fx plus ln 2 0 to x ft dt that is equals to 1 x greater than equals to 0 for all x greater than 0 you need to find all right so wherever you will see that fx this is one of the type of definite integration under the integration you just simply by closing your eyes you just simply differentiate it what will become f dash x 
plus l n two f of x equals to zero. Then f dash x equals to what? Minus l n two f x. If we'll integrate it, if we'll integrate it, what will come? Uh, f dash x by f x equals to minus l n two. So this will become l n f x equals to minus l n two into x plus c. All right. From here, if we'll put x equals to zero, x equals to zero, then f of zero equals to and this is 0 to 0, which integration is 0? So, f of 0 is 1. So, by initial value condition, if we will put, this will become 0, this will become 0, hence c equals to also 0. So, ln f of 0 minus ln 2 minus ln 2 into 0 plus c and that means c equals to also 0 because ln f of 0, f of 0 is 1. So, c equals to 0. So, uh, what I have got? ln f x, ln f x equals to minus x ln 2 that is it. So, f x equals to how much? e to the power minus x ln 2. So, that is e to the power ln 2 to the power minus x. So, 1 by 2 whole to the power of x. That is the answer. So, this kind of easy questions also comes in ISI and mostly the questions which are easy if you have a very strong calculation, uh, calculus background, then it might be uh, very well it will be solvable by you. Other than that, you might be struggling a bit, all right. So, now the one of the important question that is mod x denotes the uh, sorry box x denotes the integer uh, largest integer less than or equals to x then 9 plus root over 80 whole to the power 20 equals to. So, the integer value you need to find because this is a box function it is given means you need to find what integral part of integral part by integer part of 9 plus root over 80 whole to the power 20 this is a magical problem. Once you understand the flavor of it, you will love it. So, what will come here? 9 plus root over 80 means what? 16 into 5 means 4 root 5 whole to the power 20. That is I am taking as uh, say p. All right. Suppose there will be some rational part and irrational part which will give you some integer plus f. All right. I need to find what? I. Only this value. Because any number can be expressed as the summation of its box function and fractional part. Means if x belongs to R, then you can write it x equals to box x plus fractional part of x. Since here are some fractional part of x, so that means here some integer part will be there, some fractional part will be there. And since you know that all fractional part is less than 1, always and 0, the above 0. So now, if I will say that p dash, that is equals to what? 9 minus 4 root 5 equal to the power 20 the magic here. 4 root 5, root 5 means what? 2 point something. 4 into 2 point something means 8 point something. Means 9 minus 4 root 5 is less than 1. Right. So, that means you will never get the integer part here because this is a proper fraction part. 0 to 1 means if you will multi power, higher power it up. Means if you will do it whole to the power 2, whole to the power 4, 3, 5, whatever you do. Since any number, if x is belongs to 0 to 1, then x to the power n also less than uh, less than 1 and 0, right. So, that means integer part will be always 0. So, that means there will be only fractional part. So, now, what I will do? p plus p dash that is equals to 9 plus 4 root 5 whole to the power 20 plus 9 minus 4 root 5 whole to the power 20, all right. So, that is equals to what I will write down i plus f plus f dash, all right. Now, you check it. See, here if you will just add these two, you will get only integer number, right? Because all the odd power will be cancelled out, right? So, what we will get? So, I will write down the 9 plus 4 root 5 whole to the power 20 or plus 9 minus 4 root 5 whole to the power 20 equals to what I have got? i plus f plus f dash. This is integer this is two our fractions, all right. Now, since this part is integer, since this part is always integer, so that means this part must be integer. Uh, you would say that sir, how two fraction will add up and make a integer? Because if you will take half and half, that is one, one by three and two by three, that is also accumulate to one. So, the beautiful thing is that we know that zero to f to one and zero also f dash varies from zero to one. 
So if you we'll add these two, it will get f plus f dash to two. So now I will I am claiming that f plus f dash is an integer. F plus f dash is an integer which lies between lies between zero and one. Thus, f plus f dash that should be equals to one because zero and two, right? So I am asking you that you find an integer which lies between zero and two. That means what? One must be it, right? Because in between zero and two, there is only one integer left. So f plus f dash is one. So that means I can write it 9 plus 4 root 5 whole to the power 20 plus 9 minus 4 root 5 whole to the power 20 that is equals to i plus 1. Hence I will write down i equals to 9 plus 4 root 5 whole to the power 20 plus 9 minus 4 root 5 whole to the power 20 minus 1. So this is the integer part. I need to find out that. So anywhere it is the answer that is good. That's it. So C is the correct answer. All right. So, these are the couple of questions that I have solved so far. So, hope you have enjoyed it this and probably you have understood. Make, do make comment if you do not understand some questions. So, later part we will be solving many more questions to come in your way. Uh, so, you should not worry about this thing. All right. So, hope you understand the flavor of ISI. I think if you have a little bit of sense in 11, 12 mathematics and if you are taking a competitive preparation, then you might be able to solve some of the question and crack the UGA level. Do comment and uh, just let me know how this lecture goes. And see you in the next time with some subjective questions. Till then, all the best. Thank you so much.